is a let's build session. Uh, the objective for this session is to experiment uh, with the uh, IG Publisher template mechanism to let you customize a template to change the look and feel, to change the appearance a little bit. We're not going to get terribly fancy, um, but just give you a sense of what uh, the process looks like. This is a process that didn't work at all two days ago. Uh, the code was written in the last two days, and uh, Graham uh, produced the new version of the IG Publisher that actually does this at about 9.30 this morning. So this is very much a just-in-time uh, type presentation. We had a big session on using templates to publish implementation guides right before uh, the working group meeting uh, that happened in the U.S. in September. Uh, and it was much the same in that the sample template or the sample implementation guides that we were having people practice on got committed about 10 minutes before we actually asked them to start playing with them. Um, so this is an area that is in active development within HL7. Uh, the notion of using templates is something we wanted to do for a while but it's taken us a little bit of time to get here. So let's, has everybody grabbed that link? If you haven't, take a quick picture of it because I'm not going to display it after this point. Okay. I'm going to now change to show you the same screen that I'm seeing because that makes life easier for both of us. It makes life easier for both of us if you actually get to see the same screen, because that's not very helpful. Ah, there we go. Excellent. I don't know whether uh, most of you got the prerequisites. They did go out a couple of days ago. Um, ideally, you should have a Git client, but you don't have to have one. You can just download content directly from Git. Um, however, you will need Java, uh, some sort of a Java runtime environment, 1.8 or newer. Um, generally not a problem for most people these days. Uh, the trickier pieces is that you need to have Ruby installed and you need to have Jekyll installed. The IG Publisher relies on both of those. Um, well, specifically, it relies on Jekyll, which in turn relies on Ruby. Uh, that's how we do our static web page publication. If you don't have those installed, you can try quickly to go get them. Um, but uh, the IG Publishing process won't actually function. You can, however, follow along with the rest of the exercise and go and create stuff in your space. You just won't be able to see what it looks like. Um, We're going to do a few things today. First of all, we're going to grab the sample implementation guide that HL7 has defined uh, and make sure that you can actually run the build locally uh, because before you start customizing something, it helps to make sure that the base version functions so that you don't presume that you messed something up um, with your customization of the template uh, as opposed to it being your build environment. We're then going to create a local template uh, that uh, basically does nothing uh, and point to that and make sure that the build still works. And then if all of that uh, has been happy, then we're going to change our local template to do some interesting things, or at least kind of interesting things. We're gonna change a couple of colors and we're gonna add a picture. Whether that counts as interesting or not, I guess depends on your, uh, your definition. Uh, and then we will run the IG Publisher again uh, and hopefully see a pretty picture of a cat or something in our implementation guide. Uh, and once you've got that working, then of course you are free uh, to go off and do more interesting things that completely change the layout of your implementation guide uh, and uh, improve the fonts and styles and, and make it look like somebody who really understands graphical design did the design of the implementation guide as opposed to Graham and me and a couple of other people who don't necessarily have a strong background in that. So, 
first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to GitHub and look at the sample implementation guide. There's two different ways you can go about grabbing uh, the sample. Whoops, I did not want to click on that. Uh, sample implementation guide. One is that if you are already a Git type person, uh, you can create a fork of this particular sample IG uh, and then clone that down into your uh, local machine and play around there. Um, if all of that sounds like Greek to you and you have no idea what that means, then there's an alternative, which is to click on this cloner download and say download zip, because I presume most of you know how to download a zip and unzip that somewhere on your local machine, uh, which works just fine. Seeing as I've already got a custom version of the sample IG that's been tweaked, I'm just going to do the download zip thing. And I'm going to go find a place to put that. The sample implementation guide uh, it contains class notes, which you can ignore because that was for the demonstration uh, back in September. Uh, it's got an input folder and an input cache folder. The input cache folder you can toast if you want to. The input folder, on the other hand, is pretty important. The next step for us uh, is to grab the current IG publisher. Um, I have not yet uh, grabbed the pull requests from various people who have explained to me how to do this properly with a Mac. Um, that will happen soon-ish. Uh, for now, there's a Windows batch file that will do it for you. Um, basically, it's going to do two things. It's going to create uh, an input cache folder if you didn't already have one, but you should. Uh, and then it's going to go and download the current copy of the IG Publisher and throw it there. Uh, we're all going to be downloading a really large file, which of course will suck up all of the internet in the room for a while. Um, we could have had that committed, but we didn't want to do that because that creates problems for other folks. Um, once that is done, uh, then we'll be able to kick off the IG Publisher. While that's <coughs> happening, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what templates are by walking you through uh, the base IG template. Templates consist of a few things. Um, there is a configuration file uh, maintained in JSON that essentially tells it what are the different um, pages that are going to get generated for different types of profiles. Uh, it tells it what kind of scripts are going to get run at different points within the build. Uh, and it tells it um, what kinds of widgets that are possible to, to produce uh, with the IG Publisher you actually want generated and what you want them called. So what's going to be happening within the IG Publisher is that the different artifacts that you have, code systems, example instances, most commonly uh, profiles, we do the most with profiles because they're the hardest thing to understand and where the most of the complexity typically lives, is we want to render those in different ways. Um, and we're actually planning to add some new rendering capabilities to that soon. Uh, that will hopefully make profiles easier to understand because we've had feedback that implementers are looking at the diagrams that we have right now and they're not necessarily understanding what's going on. So our objective, of course, is to make things as understandable as possible. 
uh, and we'll be experimenting with different renderings to make that happen. The templating process says you get to choose what renderings you want and you get to choose where you want them to appear. So there are some implementation guides where tabs are a problem. We don't like tabs, maybe because we're doing mobile stuff, maybe because we just don't like clicks, so we just want all of the different uh, layouts, one after the other after the other, maybe because we're going to print things because we hate trees. Uh, and so you can do that. You can choose what order, what ones do we want our users to see first. Um, I have one client who absolutely hates the views that uh, HL7 produced, so they've created their own view. Uh, and that's the one that shows first, but they also have the historical HL7 ones available in case they have implementers who are used to seeing those. Uh, and so that's what, we're what we end up defining in here. There is documentation on how all of this works. It's complicated and kind of ugly, and the whole point of the new templating approach is that HL7 can write this file, and then you can focus um, instead on things like what is the logo for our organization, and down in the footer, when we say report problems here, where do you want them to go? Because it's probably not uh, into the HL7 uh, GForge or now JIRA reporting mechanism. Uh, and so you can change those pieces and change some of the colors to reflect your particular branding, uh, but have the presentation sort of consistent with HL7s. So as we make improvements, you will get those automatically. And this is being horribly slow. Hmm. Well, that I didn't plan for. I have an easy alternative because I've got probably 50 different copies of the ID publisher sitting in my uh, drive, so I can copy it from somewhere else, but that doesn't help you much. Um, I will keep talking and hope that it finishes soon. Ah, it finished. There we go. So I'm going to jump back to my sample IG. So now that I've grabbed the publisher, um, and we do this because the publisher changes on a fairly frequent basis. So you're going to want to go and grab a new copy of the publisher, and it doesn't make sense for us to check that into the sample IG all the time. And the next step is to run uh, the build process. Running the build process is very simple. You're launching the jar, and you're passing to it uh, a pointer to this ig.ini file that essentially tells it where is the implementation guide file and what is the template that I'm building with. So we'll see whether this one works. Uh, one of the things that the build process does do uh, is it goes and grabs copies of uh, the underlying fire specification that you're pointing to. So what's happening here is it's going and grabbing the current uh, release of R4 because that's what uh, the sample IG is defined against and it maintains that in a cache for you so you only have to grab that once even if you have a number of different IGs that are using it. Earlier in the process, it also grabbed R5 because that's what our implementation guide is actually valid against. Hello. Yes? Uh, if you're downloading the jar manually, uh, you're going to put that into input cache. So input cache contains things that you can download from elsewhere. Um, it contains the schemas, uh, which you might use when you're validating your instances. Uh, it contains a terminology cache, so as you're going through and validating terminology, uh, you can cache those validation results so you're not hitting the terminology server quite as much when you're doing your build process, and it contains the IG publisher. You can choose to commit any or all of these things into source control if you want to. The IG publisher, of course, is rather large, so there's a penalty for doing that. But uh, if you have that available to you, then your build is going to run faster. If you have to go and grab that from scratch, it's going to take you more time. So while that continues to run, I'm going to talk a little bit more about 
uh, the template. Within the template, uh, there are a number of include files. Uh, we have a standard page begin and page end, which defines what does the top of all of the pages look like and what does the bottom of all of the pages look like. Uh, there's some extracts from that for the footer and the header, which are the parts that are most commonly customized. So what do you want to show in that middle band uh, in your header? What do you want to show at the end of the footer uh, when you're looking at your implementation guide? So if we go here, the header piece is this bit here, and the footer piece is this bit here. And that's the portion that is most commonly customized when people are wanting to mess around with their own implementation guides. So those are called out. Um, there is also uh, a template for Markdown or HTML pages, which is what shows up on pages oops, like this one. Uh, let me go find the home. So where your content is basically pure markdown. What do you want that to look like? Um, if you want some additional wrapping or whatever, you can do that. Um, and most of the, what the base template there does is pretty boring. Um, it defines uh, the um, line numbering uh, metadata, so to get all your section numbers and subsection numbers showing up properly. Uh, it defines a publish box, which is something that HL7 requires in all of its stuff, and it says that we're going to have the common page begin fragment and the common page end fragment, and then put the page content, which is what you actually define in your implementation guide, right there. I think our IG build ran. Yes. So one of the things to be aware of is sometimes people look at this thing that says done and they think that that means that everything is good. And it kind of means that everything is good. It means that you'll actually see content, which is always a nice thing. If you don't get done, then it probably means that you don't have any web pages to look like look at at all. But please also pay attention to this which says, I have errors and warnings and no information messages. And also pay attention to this. I have two broken hyperlinks. I'm not overly fussed about these because right now I just care that it built at all. But if I was wanting to go through a publication process with HL7, they would really like those numbers to be zero in terms of broken links and errors and warnings. And they will have a friendly chat with you if they're not about why they're not. And sometimes the answer of why they're not is because the tooling is broken and it's complaining about things that aren't actually broken. That happens more often than we'd like it to. We continue to work on the tools. Um, but quite often it's because you put your hyperlinks wrong. Uh, in that case, we ask you to go fix them. So if we go take a look now at our sample IG, um, we will have an output folder and a whole whack of stuff in that output folder. And if we just open up the index page of that, whoops, I'm looking in the wrong place. That's not what I was, um, I was doing demo. That's where I was supposed to be playing. There we go. So this is uh, the new default template uh, for implementation guides, which no longer shows the Fire logo and the HL7 logo and the HL7 color scheme, because uh, the Fire logo is not something uh, that you're allowed to use unless you ask for HL7's permission. And the HL7 logo is not something you're allowed to use unless you're HL7. Um, which most of you probably aren't. Uh, so we no, 
we have now removed those from the standard template, which makes it much easier for people to use the standard template and not violate HL7's copyright, which almost everybody was doing because they didn't understand how to customize the template to remove the stuff that they weren't supposed to have. Um, the color scheme also makes it a little bit more obvious that you're not uh, HL7. I'm not sure I love the purple color. If somebody would like it to be different, tell me what they would like it to be and, and we can make that happen. Or you can even submit a pull request because you'll know how to change it now, uh, at least by the time we're done this. So this is what our implementation guide looks like right now. Hopefully the one that ran on your machine looks somewhat similar to that. How many of you were able to get the IG publisher to run? Considerably more than zero. That, that, that's excellent. Um, for those of you who did not, that's because you didn't care to try or because you ran into technical problems. Technical problems? Okay. Um, I'm happy to sit and work with anybody after this um, to try to get uh, their IG environment working, um, but probably doesn't make sense for us to do that right now, and I don't have anybody to run around and look over your shoulder to help me. Um, next step, uh, now that we have this working, um, is the template piece. So, close those, we don't need those anymore. One of the nice things about the templating approach is you don't have to have your template sitting somewhere out on GitHub. You can, uh, and eventually you'll probably want to so that other people can point to uh, your template regardless of what machine they're running from. But when you're just first playing around and trying to make things work, you can do it locally. So what I'm going to do in my space uh, is I'm gonna go back up to this sample IG and I'm going to create a new folder called My Template, where I'm going to put uh, the customized version of the template. I, and to run it all, my template needs to have a subfolder within it called Package. And this is used by the NPM uh, packaging mechanism we now use in all of our fire tooling to give metadata about what the heck is this thing and where is it supposed to live. Um, from within that, I need to create a package.json file. And I can create it from scratch, but I'm lazy. Um, and I expect most of you um, are lazy too because you're in an advanced course and you don't get to be advanced without learning a certain amount of laziness. Uh, there's two possibilities. You can either copy the one from the HL7 uh, fired template, uh, which customizes the base template, or you can, uh, there's actually going to be one sitting inside uh, the template folder that, got gener that gets generated on your machine uh, as part of the build process. Uh, and there's one right there. So I'm actually just gonna grab this one because it's close and easy. And I'm gonna stick that into my template package. And then I'm gonna open it up. And of course it says the wrong things because it's the template that I was building against before but I don't want to build against that one. I want to build against my own. So I'm going to change this to my own name. Uh, so I'm going to call this test and my project, but it can be whatever you like. Um, if you are going to be putting it into HL7's continuous integration build space, uh, it should be unique or we're going to have problems. Uh, but beyond that, it doesn't matter much. This stays the same because uh, this thing is a fire template. All of your templates should look like that. The license uh, can be whatever you want it to be. Um, there's a set of codes that are available to the documentation 
that's referenced in your MS Word document tells you uh, what those are. Uh, I'm going to leave this at Creative Commons Zero, which means that it's public domain. If you want a tighter license on your templates for some reason, you can do that. If you want to put them into continuous integration build environment, though, uh, they do have to be open licenses. We don't do closed license stuff. Uh, description. Um, Lloyd playing around. Uh, author. Yeah, I'm not going to bother changing that. Uh, canonical. Uh, it should be somewhat different. So I'm going to call this... spell my own name. Date you can change if you want to. I don't care. We'll call this the original version. Uh, version. Um, yeah, let's actually I don't need that. I'm going to change that to 0 0.0.1. And now let's do the important piece, which is that this template that we're creating depends on another template. So I need to declare a base, and that base is the thing that I just deleted. <laughs> so I gotta go look up what it is again. So go back over to template package, and this is my base. Um, and something that doesn't yet matter, but soon will, is formally declare a dependency on that, because uh, Graham says that I need to. I'm not quite sure why I need to, because it seems redundant to me, but that's how NPM works. Uh, and I'm going to declare that I'm dependent on version one, which is the same version as was declared there. And that should be all I need to do I, to create a custom template that functions, but doesn't actually do anything. All that I've really done here is create my own template identifier and say that I am dependent on some base template. So it's going to go grab everything from the base template, and then it's going to update and overwrite it with everything else I've defined, which is nothing. So I'm going to end up with the base template, but it's going to look like it's my template. Uh, second thing that I need to do is uh, we need to change our sample IG to point at our new template. So if I go up to my sample IG directory and open this IG.ini file, there's a bunch of stuff in here that's probably going to get moved soon. The two key things that are not going to get moved are those, and the one that I want to change is this one. I don't want to point to the base template anymore, I want to point to mine. Mine isn't published out on the web anywhere, so I can't point to it by ID. Instead, I have to point to it by full file name. And so uh, the location of my template is this. And I'm going to go into my INI file and paste that full location. I should be able to do a relative folder, but that was not working for me this morning, and I did not have time to debug why. So I'm just going to point to it by the full path. And then I'm going to go back to my root directory and say, run it again. And it's going to go off and blow up. Excellent. It's unhappy because I have a file in open that's in a folder that it's trying to wipe and it can't do that. So close the file and then try running it again. So 
So it goes and grabs my template and then says, hey, this is dependent on something else. It goes and grabs the underlying template and both of those things seem to have worked. And so the rest of it is just the same busy work that it was doing before. So it's gonna finish that in another minute or two. While that's happening, I'm gonna close some extra windows that we don't need anymore. Um, what you see happening in here, uh, this uh, process IG uh, and artifact list, these are all processes that are happening inside the template itself. And then we kick off the regular IG publisher uh, to do the generation publication. While that's happening, um, I know that my build is going to succeed because it's not seeing anything different than it saw last time. We're going to put something, some more interesting stuff inside of our um, custom template, seeing how much time we have left. Uh, let's go look at these instructions again. I'm going to create a subfolder. Uh, that mirrors the folders that exist in the base template. So I want a folder called content. And inside that, I want a subfolder called assets. And inside that, I want a subfolder called images. Everything in content just gets copied into your published directory uh, automatically. So um, assets slash images is something that will show up uh, in your published output. And now I need to go find a cat picture because there is a long tradition of sample IGs with cat pictures. Uh, I like that one. So I'm going to go save that. I don't want to save the link. I want to save the image. If this was for real, um, then I would want to make sure that the licensing <coughs> permissions on this are something that I'm allowed to actually have. Um, So I now have a cat picture that will be published as part of my implementation guide, but it's not going to show anywhere until I do something to make it show somewhere. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to add a reference to the cat in my header fragment. So I don't want to overwrite the header fragment. I still want to have that title show up because I don't want to mess around with that. Um, so I'm going to append to the header fragment as opposed to overwriting it. I could overwrite it if I didn't like it at all and wanted to totally change it. Um, and so I'm going to try to copy, there we go, uh, this XML. And I need to create a different folder uh, parallel to my content folder. Uh, this one is going to be called includes. And I'm going to create a file inside that. Actually, let's copy the file name before we copy the file content. So a new text file. Except that it's not completely text, it's HTML. And then I'm going to go edit that spy because that's my favorite XHTML editor and I'm going to copy this fragment I'm going to try to copy this fragment copying is hard well that's not so nice
Okay, so this is a pointer that sits inside uh, the IG Publisher that will point to wherever your assets uh, folder is going to, uh, the root for that is going to be, because there are situations where it's not necessarily the root. Uh, asset set images is fine. I need to change this to the name of the image that I just downloaded, <coughs> which is cat.jpg. Save that, and I'm being signaled that we've got five minutes left, so I'm not going to do the last portion of that exercise, which is to override the color scheme. I'm just going to gen, and hopefully we will see a cat picture. While it's running, I'll talk about the next part of the exercise at least. Um, so what this is, uh, is it's overriding, uh, actually it's adding a new CSS file uh, and those uh, style sheet um, styles uh, are overriding existing styles that are defined. So there's one called segment footer on container uh, that has a color and there's another one navbar inverse. If we'd been smarter about how we were defining colors um, we might have had a constant that we could refer to, but we didn't, so we just have to set the color in both places. And maybe you want your header bar to be a different color than your footer uh, for some reason, and you can do that this way. The proposal is to make them an ugly color or gray. You can, of course, change that. Um, and then once you've defined your CSS again, you need to tell your pages about that, and you do that by appending to the fragment CSS HTML, which defines all of our standard CSS files, and we're just going to add an additional CSS link into that so it knows where to go find our custom CSS file. Uh, and then once we've done that, we go off and build our implementation guide again, uh, which it is close to finished. Any questions while this is finishing up? The question is, can you create dependent templates on dependent templates? And the answer is, if my code is not broken, yes. I haven't actually tested that yet, but the logic should theoretically work. Um, my plan for tomorrow, hey, there's a cat. Um, the formatting isn't quite what I would like it to be, but there is a cat. Um, so we are indeed using my tem custom template. Uh, this is not part of the standard template, and I have succeeded in making it look a little bit differently uh, than the base template is. So that's what the process is. There will be documentation. There isn't any right now, because uh, as mentioned, it started working officially at 9.30 this morning. Um, but if you are into IG publishing, there is an IG publishing stream on chat.fire.org. Um, go hang out there, and we will certainly be sharing information about uh, where the documentation is and enhancements. Uh, right now, this process does not let you add your own custom scripts uh, and override those. That's going to be coming soon because there are use cases where you will want to do that. Uh, and once that happens, you can start with the base uh, HL7 template and then customize it as much or as little as you want to. Some people, all they really want is they want their logo and they want a slightly different color scheme and that's good for them. Um, but if you want to go wild and crazy, you can do that. And of course, you're free to create your own template from scratch that doesn't leverage anything that HL7 has done. You've always been able to do that, but it's a fair bit of work. Uh, and so this ability to just tweak things uh, and have an example of how to tweak things uh, is going to be helpful. Uh, in HL7, we expect that there will be a template for Fire, there will be a template for CDA, there will be a template for version 2, there will be a template for DaVinci, which builds on top of the Fire template, and probably another one for Karen Health and various other HL7 affiliated projects um, that have a bunch of implementation guides that want slightly different branding. And so you'll be able to see how cascades of templates work. 
Thank you very much.